<clears throat> Good evening. We're ready to get started. We are learning tonight Maseches Erevin Daf Ayin Ches. We're on the very last line of Ayin Zayin Amud Beis. Uh, over the course of the last uh, day or so, uh, day plus, I should say, we've been learning uh, Perek Chalon, and basically every sugya that we've seen so far is trying to figure out. What happens when you have two chatzeros and a wall of some kind between them? We've spoken about a number of iterations of width of wall, height of wall, uh, openings and breaches in walls, and so forth and so on. Uh, and we will be continuing that for the majority of the day today with one minor exception, one sugya that's seemingly out of the blue as it relates to everything else. Um, and, and, and really what we're trying to do is trying to find the scenarios whereby chatzer one and Chatzar too on different sides of this cell, I should say, different sides of, of, of this cell, where you have something between you when we are one and when we are considered to be separate. When we are one, that we can make even one Eru together as though we are one entity, or no, when we're not able to do that because we're really two separate entities. So here is another application, bottom line, Ayin Zayin Amud Beis, says the Gemara. Velmer of Nachman, Omar Rabba Bar Abuha. Rav Nachman says in the name of Rabba Bar Abuha, Ziz. Hayotze min hakosel, top of ayin ches, amud aleph, first line. If you have a protrusion, a brick that protrudes from the wall, dalid al dalid. So it's kind of like a like a, a, a an extended window sill of some kind. It sticks out pretty significantly. Let's call it a foot by a foot. Vihiniach alav sulam kol shehu, and you have a ladder that itself is not four tefachim wide. That's what Rashi, what kol shehu means. It's just not really that big of a ladder. It's a thin ladder, and it's leaned up against the ziz. It's leaned up against the protrusion. Then we say miato. That's considered binding to the other side because if they have that on their side and I have it on my side, then we. Can, we can communicate with each other. Good. However, this is only true if the ladder is actually leaning on the Z's, on the protrusion. However, if it's leaning on its own, there's too much space there. That doesn't work. And that will not be considered a mute. Then we fall back on another sugya of, that we're going to see later today is what happens if there is a... Um, Forgot to hand these out. We're gonna, I have some handouts for today, some drawings and some math that we're gonna do, but just everybody relax, I'm not an artist and I'm gonna share it with you on Zoom also through WhatsApp, so, or even through here, whichever, um, so that you can uh, understand the math. But we're gonna be dealing with what happens with ladders that are put up against walls um, and uh, hopefully we'll learn more about that. So that's case number one, where you have a Z's, a protrusion in the wall, as long as the ladder leans up against the Z's. And as long as the Z's, the protrusion is four by four tfachim, you are good to go. That is a mute that binds the two sides of the chutzar together. They could make even one a line for Ayn Ches Marala. The Amar of Nachman, Amar Rabba Barabu, same, uh, same Amora. And he says, Kosel Tisha Asar. If you have a wall that's 19 tfachim tall, you can still bind yourself to the other side. You need one ziz, one brick to protrude from the wall to break that 19 into two less than 10 units. And then you can still bond to the other side. How so? Says the Gemara, says Rashi here, which without going inside, Rashi basically says you put it at the 10 mark so that you have no space that's more than 10 from the ground until the brick is 9.5. Then there's a brick. Then from there until the top is also nine or 9.5 or whatever it is, it's less than 10. And therefore you can still bind uh, to the other side in that case as well. However, Kosel Esri, if you had a wall that was 20 and not 19, then then you would need two different zizim, uh, two different protrusions in order to break up the 20 to make each section less than 10. And this is only true you can't put the two of them right on top of one another. They have to be a distance apart from one another. Okay, good. Next case. This case is the anomaly for today and really for our parak because it doesn't really speak at all about what we're talking about. Again, we've been talking about what happens when we have chutzar one and chutzar number two, and there's some type of wall that separates us. Here, the Gemara gets into a sigya that belongs in another Masechta, Masechah Shabbos. Says the Gemara as follows, about seven, eight lines down. Amar of Huna, if you have an Amud Rishus HaRavim, Gavoa Asara V'Rochav Arba. You're in Rishus HaRavim, and you have a pillar that is your perfect shape for a Rishus Hayachi, 10 by 4 by 4. Good. V'Noat Bo Yasei Kol Shehu. And you insert a peg into it of any size, Miato. So then you've reduced that Rishus from a Rishus Hayachid into presumably a Makom Ptur. 
So there's a machlokes rishonim where you put this peg. Is it on the side or is it on the top? The basic understanding of the rishonim is that it's on the top, but there is a machlokes about that. And Amar uh, Ada Bar Ava, why is this the case? He says, shlosha, it has to be at least the ritvachim, the peg that you've inserted into this rishus hayachid. So you have your pillar that's 10 tall, four by four, and you insert a peg in the top. And it says, as long as it's three tfachim tall. Take a look at Rashi. Rashi is a few inches below where we are. Dibur Hamaschil. He adds in a word that our Gemara doesn't have. The peg is three tall. If the peg that you inserted into the top of this pillar, this Rishus Hayachid, is less than three, then it's like the roof of that thing. That does not reduce its size. If it's less than three tfachim, it doesn't reduce its size. It's just a peg. It's like a hook, whatever. It's a little hook, and it's less than a foot tall. It's less than three tfachim. So then it doesn't count. That's the shita of Rav Adabar Ava. The Gemara continues with a machlokas here. Even if it's going to be less than three tfachim, it doesn't make a difference. What is the concern here? Hishtamshus. Are you able to use this space or not? If you put a peg in the middle of your four by four, you ruin the whole thing. What are you going to do? Sit there? That's uncomfortable. You ruined it. So that's what the concern is. That's why even if it's less than three, so that's not, you still can't be nishtamesh on it. You still can't use it. You have your pillar four by four by 10. There's a big peg sitting in the middle. You ruin the top of it. It's no longer a Rosh Again, this belongs to Masech Shabbos. This is not Shaykh to at all. It's a totally a, a parenthetical Gemara, as it were. It says the Gemara, my time. What's the reason why Abayi Virava said that even if it's less than three, because lo mishtamesh what are you going to do? You can't use it anymore. You ruin the top of it. And therefore, it's not considered Rosh Hashanah anymore. Ravashi Amar, Ravashi says the other way. He says, Afidu Shegavoa Shlosha, even if it is three, we would still say that it is a Rishus Hayachid. Namely, it doesn't ruin the status of the of the four by four by ten. Why? My time, but because after the Talibamidi, you could hang your coat on it. Well, well, you have to only sit on the top. You could do anything you want with the peg. You could hang something on it. You could lean something on it. Whatever. I mean, you could do whatever you want with it, but it doesn't ruin the Rosh Hashayach. It's a big machlok as I'm right here as to how we understand this statement of Rav Huna. Omar lay Rav Acha Bere de Rav the Ravashi. Wait a minute. Milo Kulo Biasedos Mahu. What if the whole thing was filled with pegs? So again, you have a pillar, it's 10 tall, four by four, and you put uh, 40 pegs, right? You just, oh, let's say 16 pegs, rows of four, and in each direction, you put 16 pegs, not just one peg, 16 pegs. Now the whole thing is covered in pegs. So that's the Gemara's question. Well, if you only put it, it's a bed of nails, right? So what do you do now? Does that, is that considered to be uh, uh, the ruining of the Rishus or not? So the answer is the Gemara, Omar Le, he says in one third of the way down, Lo shmielach, did you not already hear this? Did lo shmielach had amar of Yochanan bur? If you have a pit, v'chul yasa mitzar from last sara. We learned about this uh, well over a hundred blot ago uh, in Masechah Shabbos, and then it says on the side on Daf Tzadi test. Let's say you have a pit that is five deep, and let's say you have a dirt rim of the pit that's five tall. So when you look inside the pit, it's ten. Five of the depth is the depth of the pit. Five above is the depth of the rim on top of the pit. So that's our case. That's what the Gemara is trying to compare to. Says the Gemara, in that case, we said, meet Starf and Lasara, the five of the pit, and then the five of the rim that goes above the ground, we combine those two things together. Why would we combine them? The rim is useless. There's nothing you can do with it, says the Gemara. What must it be? That it could be that you could have rested something on top of this new rim, the one that protrudes from the ground above the pit. Here too, here too, with the bed of nails. When you have your pegs on top of the Rishus Hayachid, you can rest something on top of it. So then you're good to go. Then you're good to go, and every and, and it should be considered a Shimush. Here, can, can I ask you this? I'm also going to just share this uh, with you guys on the screen, just so that uh, I'll, I don't know if I can share something here. If I can, let's see. More? Can I do that? Probably in the chat, you can send an attachment. Let's see. Yeah, the file. I'm just going to share this file with you. It's not algebra, it's Pythagorean theorem, and it's easy. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's uh, triangles that have right angles. So I shared a file with you uh, for those of you who are on here. Uh, in the chat, something should have popped up there. If you click on chat on the bottom, I probably should take one for myself here. Um, what we're going to be doing now is discussing, as the picture already indicates, how far up the wall does a ladder have to go 
in order for it to, uh, to be considered a connection to the other side. Uh, so that's what we're going to be discussing. Just make sure that I... Uh... Okay. So uh, what we're going to be doing here is analyzing this uh, Gemara, and we'll just use this sheet on the side as a corollary to do a little bit of math. Big machlokas we shown him here, and that's why I even bothered to do this. Halfway down, Amar Rabbi Huda Amar Shmuel, Kosal Asar, if you have a wall that's 10, the wall that separates Chatzar 1 and, and, and Chatzar 2, Tzorich Tzulam Arva'a Asar Lahatiro. You need the ladder to be 14 Tfachim tall. Look all the way, the ladder all the way to the right, Rabbi Huda Amar Shmuel. So if you look underneath, it says 14 Tfachim. Now, Rashi here has a critical line. Rashi says that all of the ladders in this case are four tfachim from the wall. So you can see, I drew some dotted lines there. It's four tfachim from the wall, and the wall is 10. What's the math problem? The ladder is not 14. Because in Pythagorean theorem, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you can look at all the math. The angle of this ladder makes it 11, approximately 11 tfachim tall. OK, that's problem number one. Let's keep going. Uh, the Gemara says, Rav Yosef Amar, Afilu Shloshasar Umashu. You can see in the drawing number two under Rav Yosef, the second one from the right. Rav Yosef says, I, you see, it's off the top by Tefach Echad. Here, too, the height is nine because it's one Tefach off the top of the 10 wall. The distance of the base of the ladder is four. And look at the bottom of the math. This is approximately 10. And Rav Yosef called this 13. Number, case number three, even if the ladder is 11, well, what does that mean? We know it's four from the ground, so it's seven from the bottom. It means that there's three tfachim from the top, and Pythagorean theorem says that that's, that ladder is going to be eight tfachim tall, only eight. So then that doesn't work either. The last shita, Rav Huna Bereid Rav Yoshua Amar, Afilu Shiva Umashu, even if it's seven, and if you look at the last picture, there's seven tfachim from the top, Three of the ladder, the, the, the ladder touches the wall, three tfachim off the ground, still four off. And, and the math would, when you do the math of the three height with the, with the four off the wall, it should be five. All of these numbers are off, all of them. So Tosvos is, is tremendously troubled by Rashi. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense at all. If you're going to tell me that all of the ladders are exactly four tfachim, from the base of the wall, every one of the numbers of the Gemara is off. You look at all the numbers under the letters, 14, 13, 11, 7. Now look at the bottom of the math, 11, 10, 8, 5. You're totally off. And that's why wait, we have, I brought out a colored marker. We're getting all kinds of educational here. Where did that marker go? Here. So that's why Tosvos argues that if you have a wall, your ladder Tosfos argues that the ladder, whatever height the wall is, that's how far it is off of the wall. It has to be a perfect square. Now do the math. What is the angle here? This is a right angle, and each side is the same, which means that the hypotenuse is x times the square root of 2, 10 times 1.4 is 14. Exactly like the first sheet on the Gemara. That's Rabbi Huda Shmuel. So Tosu says to Rashi, how can you possibly say, like the picture is drawn in the document that you have, that everything's only four tzvachim off the wall. If they're four tzvachim off the wall, all of the Amorim did terrible math, all of them. Rashi, what are you talking about? So Tosu completely rejects Rashi. And he says that, that the, the way that you look at the ladder that's against the wall, it's always at 45 degrees. The only question is how high on the wall do you have to go? If it's 10, great. Well, then we're off the wall 10. Is it 13? Then we're off the wall. Whatever it is, it is. So that's why Rashi and Tosas have a huge machlokas here. Um, and if you see on the bottom here, I wrote this as well. Uh, the second to last line on this page uh, on, the, on the copy here. If up to 10 tfachim on the wall, then 10 tfachim from the wall. And then all the math then works out. If you go down the line, what was the sheets of Rabbi Yosef? Nine. Well, nine times 1.4, it's almost 13. It's 12.6. I think that math works out to 12.6. It's very close, but it's much better than being off by three whole numbers. So that's why Tosos completely rejects Rashi's understanding that all, this picture that I drew you of the four ladders, it's all wrong, uh, says Tosos, because it can't be that they are all four tfachim off of the wall. The math does, simply does not work. 
And that's why had I redrawn this, I didn't want to spare the time. But all of the ladders would be, if it was 10 high, Rabbi Yehuda Amar Shmuel, according to Tosvos, if you're saying that the ladder has to touch at the 10th tefach, that means that it's also 10 tefachim off the wall. Shita number two, Rabbi Yosef, if it's 9 tefachim high on the wall, it's 9 tefachim on the ground off the wall. All the ladders will be at exactly 45 degree angles because if the if the right angle, each side is exactly the same side, then by definition, the, the, the angle of the ladder will be exactly 45 degrees. And then the math works out much, 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 much better. Hope that makes sense. Okay, says the Gemara as follows. Uh, Amar Rav, we are two thirds of the way down um, and we are learning a connected so yeah, about ladders, but not quite the same. Amar Rav, Sulam Zakuf Memait, if you have a straight ladder, uh, that does count as a mute. It does bind the two sides together. Gemara, Veloyadana my time. It's my tradition. I did learn this shita, but I don't know why. I, I, I heard my Rebbe say it. I just don't know why it's the case. Somebody please tell me. Omar Shmuel, this is Rav talking, remember. Omar Shmuel, Shmuel said, Shmuel said, Velo Yoda Abba. Abba was a term of endearment for Rav. Velo Yoda Abba, my father, doesn't know. Taima de Hamilsa. He doesn't know the answer to this question. Did he not learn the previous blot that we just learned? Says Shmuel, trying to explain to Rav. It's the same thing as having two boards protrude from a wall, one above the other. We said yesterday, as long as they're within three, I'm good to go. So that's what Shmuel wants to say within Rav. Clearly, Rav rejected that. Otherwise, Rav would have said it. Rav knew what was in the Gemara. He gave Sharon everything. He knew. So good question. Why didn't Rav say that? Okay. Amar Rabba, uh, 12 lines from the bottom, 10 lines from the bottom. Amar Rabba, Amar Rabbi Chia, the column Sheba Babel, the palm trees that were in Babel, Einan Tzrichen Keba, they can be used to minimize the height of the wall, thereby binding me from Chatzar 1 to Chatzar 2, but they do not need to be firmly established in the ground. No cement, no screws, no bolts, no nothing. They're good to go. My Taima, what's the reason why? Because this wood is particularly dense. Kvedan Kovata. They're so heavy that that is their kvias. You don't have to worry that someone is going to move them. The ladders that are in Bavel, a special type of ladder, we'll see shortly what kind of ladders these were. The Sulamo Sheba Bavel, also in Antrich and Keba. They don't need to be screwed into the wall. They don't need to be cemented down. My time, oh, why not? Because Kvedan Kovatan, because they are very heavy. So says the Gemara, aren't these, these are very similar halacho. So let's see which one's uh, more dense than which. Man de Amar Sulamos. The one who says that the ladders are koveya even without being screwed down, kol shekain to call them. Then they, that shita who says that the ladders are heavy enough, all the more so the trees are heavy enough, namely that the trees are denser than the ladders. If you say that the ladder is heavy enough that we don't have to worry about it, then kol shekain, all the more so it's going to be true about the wood from the from the dekel tree. Uman de amar de the other way is not true. Uman de amar de kolim, someone who says that the trees are so heavy, but aval sulamo slow. They would say, I, I can't tell you yes or no about the ladder, but I would guess that you would have to be kovea that if you wanted it to be part of the reduction in height of your wall. Four lines, five lines from the bottom. So you have your big machlokas. We shouldn't have Rashi Rabbam how to understand this. We'll go according to Rashi. You have two, uh, your, your horizontal, your verticals of the ladder are made of regular ladder, ladder, ladder and the, the rungs are kashin, they're made out of straw, so they can't hold your weight. So says the Gemara, Mahu. Answers the Gemara, three lines from the bottom. Amr lay, ain kafa regal olabah, and you can't do that. that. That doesn't work. That ladder is a fake. And therefore, you are not allowed to rely on it to connect you to the other side of the chutzit. How about kashin mikan ve kashin mikan ve sulam ve emsa? Let's say that the verticals were made out of the straw and the rungs were made out of the, the actual wood, mahu amar lay, because the rungs the themselves are real. What? The same thing, you can hold your weight. You're right as it relates to weight, correct. However, the Gemara says here in regards to the uh, rungs, hare kafa regal olabahem. At least what you're stepping on is theoretically able to hold. It's true the ladder won't hold your weight. Maskim. By the way, it's also true you never have to climb the ladder. It's a theoretical pesach, right? We don't we don't care if you actually climb over the ladder. It needs to be a theoretical entry. Now your question is very good and requires research. Why would this still be tolerable? Because it's not even theoretically possible to cross over, which means we're getting to the limit of this idea, which is that we don't even need you to even in theory get there. We need what you're stepping on to be something that is a material that in theory could hold your weight and straw can't and wood can. Your question's better than the answer. It's a good point. 
Okay, so that's where the Gemara distinguishes that if the rungs of the ladder are made out of wood, you're good to go. Let's turn to the top of Ayin Ches Amud, Amud Beis. On the top of this Amud, we're going to go down to the Mishnah. On the top of this Amud, Chokak Lehashlim Bekosel Bekama. Let's say you're going to dig out footholds in the wall. Um, how high do you have to dig them out? What's the case here? So we need Rashi for this one because what the Gemara doesn't say is that we're still talking about a ladder. <laughs> Says Rashi, Chakak lehashlim bekosel sulam tsar. There is in fact a thin ladder. The chakak bekosel mikanu mikan, and you cut out a foothold in the kosel on each side. Keneged chavake hasulam opposite the rungs of the ladder lehashlim rochvo the dal. Because remember, we always need our foothold to have to be four by four, just like we saw when we started with today with the z's and with the protrusions that have to be four, four by four. So you're digging out of the wall. So that's the Gemara's question: How high on the wall do I have to dig out the footholds? Answers the Gemara: Amar lei be'asara up until the tenth tefach, and then even if the wall's taller, I'm good to go. Fine. Next case: Amar lei. What if there was no ladder? What if I'm just digging out footholds? My only way to climb that wall is with footholds. What do you say? So then, Omar Lay, below Komaso. However tall the wall is, that's how high, how, how high you have to dig out the footholds. Says the Gemara third line, Who cares? What is the difference? Why is it that when there is a thin ladder, which is effectively useless, why is it that when there is a thin ladder and you're digging out footholds by each rung, you only have to do do it up to 10 tvachim? But when you're digging out only footholds with no ladder, you have to go below Komaso all the way to the top of the wall. So answers the Gemara, I'm really awesome. When it comes to the ladder, granted, the ladder itself is not big enough halachically, it's not four by four, but at least you can hold on to the arms and you can climb up and stick your feet in. Over there in the case where there was at least a, a, a slim ladder, I could hold on to the, the slim ladders while I put my feet inside the foothold in the wall. No problem. But hacha lo Here, when you only have the cutouts in the wall, it's insufficient. And therefore, you then need to have the cutouts go all the way up to the top. Fourth line. What if you have a tree that is just perfectly placed to climb? It's a great climbing tree. And it, it, we know we have an Isra Durabanan of, of climbing trees or touching trees on Shabbat Isra Durabanan. Fine, we're going to discuss that a little bit. So the question is, what if the tree is perfectly placed? Mahu. So says the Gemara, Tiboy le Rebbe, Tiboy le Rabbanan. This would be a question according to the Shita of Rebbe and the Rabbanan. Okay, we saw these shitas a while ago, and the Gemara will tell us what the shitas are. Tiboy the Rebbe, what would be the question according to the Re- to Rebbe? Or I should say Rabbi. We learned that the other day, Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi and Rabbi. Ad kan lo ka'ama Rebbe, I can't, it's too hard, sorry. Ad kan lo ka'ama Rebbe hasam. When did Rebbe say his idea of kol davar shum mishum shvus lo gazru alav? When did he say that the only time, uh, when did he say that we do not uh, worry about a dinder rabban and hanimili bein ashmashos. That's true. When all I needed to be concerned about was bein ashmashos. Aval kule yom alo. But here we need that pesach between chutzer one and chutzer two to always be present. Not only during bein ashmashos, but on Shabbos I can't climb the tree. It's muksa. Ah, oh, so that's one possibility. Odilma. Or maybe on the other side, really the rabbis who never would have allowed Isiri de Rabbanan during Ben Hashemashos, I feel the Rabbanan, even they would be lenient here. They would say Pischa, who is still considered an, uh, an opening, the Arya who de Revia Ale. And there's just a lion that's sitting here. What does that mean? It means that there's a Din de Rabbanan that was overlaid our concern here. Yes, we know we want to connect Chatzar 1 to Chatzar 2. It happens to be the way we connect Chatzar 1 to Chatzar 2 is with a tree. Ah, you can't climb a tree? I know you can't climb a tree. But, but the theory is that I can get there. So maybe there are, even the Rabbana would be Mekil. So that's case number one. And before we answer this question, let's bring in another question. What about a tree that was used for Avodah Zarah? I saw a shera sulamahu. What if the what if the the step stool that we're using is a tree that's an ashera? Big machlokas. Is this cut from the ground or is it not cut from the ground? Why? Because if there's an ashera that's still attached to the ground, it might not be muksa because you have no use for the tree. You're, you're, it's an avodazara tree. You don't do avodazara. So maybe that tree is not Muksa Ladina. Maybe it was never part of the Gzera de Rabbana. Okay, so now well, let's see how this plays out. Says the Gemara, Tibar the Rabbi Huda, Tibar the Rabbana. Here we have to ask this question about the Asherah, the climbing of the Asherah to use to get to the other side of the Chatzar. I have to ask both according to Rabbi Huda and the Rabbana. Tibar the Rabbi Huda, I can lo kama Rabbi Huda hasam the muter liknos bayis be'isurei hana. When we said earlier uh, in this Masechta, when was this? This was a while ago. Uh, is on Daf Lamed Aleph says uh, on the side. It says on, on Daf Lamed Aleph that we are allowed at times to be uh, to be kone shvisa 
in a place that has an Isr Hana. Okay, so it says the Gemara, Rabbi Yehuda says over there that it's mutter to be make to make a Kenyan even where it's a, there's an Isr Hana. Elahasam, but the only reason he allowed was over there. Why? Because by there, we only needed to make sure that our Kenyan lasted through Bein Hashmashos. The Basar de Kanale Eruv, once Bein Hashmashos ended and I was Kona Shvisa, then Lo Nichale Delintar, I don't care what happens to my food. Maybe only over there he was lenient by an Isser Hanav, but maybe here he would not be. Uh, Odilma, maybe a few of the Rabbanon, even according to the Rabbanon, that you're not allowed to do that. Still, they'd say, here in our case, by the Asherah Pischahu, really that it's still considered I can get from one from one chutzar to the other. It should still bind me, even if it's an Asherah tree, at least in theory, I could climb the tree and get there. I'll that there may be an Isser de Rabbanon. It's just that Va'arya de Reviel, I have an Isser de Rabbanon that was thrusted upon me. What can I do? So these are the two cases. A tree, a regular tree, and an Asherah tree. Omar Leib. Rabbah, this question, you have to look back up uh, almost to the top to see who's talking to. This was a question from Rav Yosef to Rabbah. So now, Omar Leh. Rabbah answers halfway down, Ayin Ches Hamid Beis. Omar Leh, Rabbah says to Rav Yosef, Elon Mutter, the case of the tree is permissible. Ve'asherah Asura. Oh, we, we could already kind of theorize why that's the case. By Shabbos, it's only the Sudar We need a theoretical connection from Chatzar 1 to Chatzar 2. Fine, I got it. By the Avodah Zara, it's Avodah Zara. Come on, it's an Asherah. Stay away. So that's answer number one. Answer number two says, what are you talking about? It's the exact opposite that should make sense. It should be that the Asherah is mutter and the Elon on Shabbos is not mutter. Why? Because Elon, by a tree, she is her Shabbos goreim lo. The reason why the tree is us is because of Shabbos. So then you can't use that tree to be ma'arev to the next chatzer. No, it's the same sugya. It's all Shabbos related. So if the reason why I can't climb that Elon is because of Shabbos, then I can't overlook that Isser de Rabbanon to enable me to link from Chatzar 1 to Chatzar. It's not good. It's too close. It's all the same topic. However, however, so let me just read it again. Ad Rabban, no. Elon she Isser Shabbos Gorem Lo Nitzar. It should be, says Rav Chizda, that what's not allowed is to use the Elon because Shabbos itself is the reason why it's Aser. However, Asherah, when it comes to the Asherah, she Iser Davar, Acher Goreim Lo. Where does the Iser of using the Avodah Zara come from? From a totally different sugi in Shas. By the way, the Rishon Amir points out this has to be Avodah, the Avodah Zara of an Akum. It can't be the Avodah Zara of a Yid. Uh, it's a side point because otherwise there would be a, a full Isser Hana here. So either way, whatever the case may be. So that's how uh, Rav, that's how Rav Chizda wants to say that, that the case should be. It's the, uh, the opposite. Because again, if the Isser of the tree is based on Shabbos, then you can't violate that to connect Chatzar 1 to Chatzar 2. And therefore he felt that that should be the case. And the Avodah Zara tree should have been permissible. It's Marnami. There's also another statement in the Amor Raim. Actually earlier, Rav Chizda was 4th century. Look who he's quoting now in the Gemara. It's Marnami ki asa ravin amar Rebbe Lazar. The Amri la amar Rebbe Abba of Yochanan. Rav Yochanan was very early. Kol she Isser Shabbos. Goring lo usher, he agrees with Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda didn't quote this. Rav Chizda, had he known, he would have quoted. It. He would have said, "Hey, I'm a Rav," but he didn't quote it. He obviously didn't know the statement of Rav. And Rav held that when the Isser of Shabbos is the Goring by the Elon, then you cannot use it to minimize the the depth of the wall, the height of the wall, thereby connecting the other chutzir. And then there's still a third sheet, and with this we'll close. Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak Masnehach. He says, "No, you guys got it all wrong." He says, the Elon, the tree case that we spoke about, remember how we said above that in the Elon case, we had to ask both according to Rebbe and the Rabbanon? He says, no, it's not either or. They are this machlokas. Just see what they hold. Rebbe holds X, Rabbanon hold Y. Elon, plug to the Rebbe and Rabbanon. And the same by the Asherah. We said we had to ask the question, both according to Rabbi Huda and the Rabbanon, says the Gemara, no, Asherah, plug to the Rebbe Huda and Rabbanon. We can't answer the question on our own. We have to look into that machlokas and follow the party lines of each of those sheets. We'll stop here. We'll pick up tomorrow night with the new Mishnah on the bottom of Ayin Chesimut Beis. Okay.